Fair warning on this video, parts of it are going to be extremely graphic. If you get nightmares easily, do not watch this video. If you have children in the room, do not watch this video. It's going to be di very difficult to make, and it's going to be slightly long, but you'll see why. <clears throat> in my previous two videos on gun issues, people have shown up to make the argument, uh, citizens don't need guns. If something happens, you call 911, the police will show up and take care of it for you. Sounds lovely. I sit here, the cops come in like heroes, take care of everything, my life goes on. In the hierarchy of priorities within a police department, types of calls they respond to, uh, no call takes priority over two words, officer down. These receive the quickest attention, and uh, in many places, quite literally, everything stops and people are going to help the, the officer who's downed. And the reason being is because it might have been you taking that call. And you're going to make sure that you do everything for that person that you know they're going to do for you if the down call is because you've been downed. So I want you... I'm going to play you some uh, sound clip here. This is uh, the dispatcher. Uh, this dispatcher incidentally is the gold standard. And this is par excellence. She is just giving, I'm going to give the baseline where she's just giving some uh, random information about, uh, just general information to police officers about some crime that happened somewhere else. And then what you're going to hear is a civilian cut in. Uh, the civilian has happened upon a police officer who's just been shot and is lying on the side of the road, bleeding to death. His name is Jeremy Henwood. So, here... That, so the first voice will be the dispatcher for the baseline, then the call's going to come in, and I want you to listen to this dispatcher. And see if you could do as well. Um, anyway, here we go. And again, it closely matches the suspect vehicle involved in a shooting in Bradley and Magnolia. Suspect in that shooting was a black male, six foot, short curly hair, green shorts, he was armed with a shotgun. Again, that's a black Audi. They thought I was about five years old, but no maker model, and no play given. It's a shame. Oh, this is all. There's an officer shot. There's an officer shot. He's still breathing. 45th and University. 45th and University, 1199. I don't know who that is on the air. Put it out. 45th and U. Where's it going? 1199, 45th and U. Is there a supervisor on the air? Receiving a hot call about a citizen calling 45 University regarding 11 6 11 We got him, we're on the way. 45th and University. 45th and University, 11 I had a citizen on the air saying that there was an officer shot. Somebody will. 813 Sam, 97. 813 Sam, 97 there. At 45th and U, 813 Sam there. Uh. Okay, medics are allowed to 45th and you confirm their clear in. Then roll in. The one of ours, 813 Sam, and it's a Lincoln unit monitoring. Lincoln 3, are you on there? Yeah, we're trying to get this info now. I'll just have you to keep responding. Okay, medics continue to roll, 45th and University. We've got medics around as well. Okay. Uh, she did not miss a beat anywhere. Um, every piece of information that was necessary to be uh, broadcast, as soon as she heard it, she was able to repeat it. Uh, to it did not matter how much noise or distortion. The distortion, incidentally, is not in the audio file. It's not because of the. Uh, I'm playing it to you. That's actually what it would sound like to her. And even through all that, with the sirens and the distortions and everything, she did not miss a beat. She got every street, all the locations, all the relevant information without skipping a beat. That is what people who don't know anything about much of anything think. It always sounds like, but not all dispatchers are this good. And I do hasten to add that uh, I would run any call anywhere, anytime with her dispatching it.
the uh, what I'm going to play you now Hello? is uh, two police officers lay on the side of the road, one in a ditch, and one on the blacktop. Uh, they both they both have been shot. Uh, one of them is still alive. One of them is dead. Incidentally, Officer Jeremy Henwood died. The one of the officers in this next call that the call is about is the son of the chief of police and uh, and as a police officer and as I've mentioned there's no higher priority in law enforcement than officer down calls and this is the chief of police's son okay there was a bit of an audio uh, problem there so I'm going to start the second call uh, two police officers have been shot passing motorist calls this in where is your emergency she just asked, where is your emergency? And the first words out of this man's mouth are 275 and 40. He said 275 on 40. These guys just shot a police officer right on the exit. You said that officer has been shot on the uh, 270 what? 270, exit 275 on 40. 275 on 40. 275 on 40. What well, Okay, 275 on 40 has now been said four times. Where are you right now? Doesn't, I'm, I'm it doesn't matter where he is, it matters where they are. They're the ones who have been shot. But instead of doing like the other dispatcher, you know, the competent one, who as soon as it comes in, she dispatches people to location and what she knows, and then she goes to collect extra information while people are driving. This one keeps all of this precious information about the two people lying on the side of the road who have been shot to herself. Wouldn't want to let that little secret out of the bag. Someone might start driving in that direction already. The exit, they're right in front of me, about 100 feet. Okay, where are they? Jeez. Right there, they're leaving a white caravan. Okay, stay on the line. Okay, it's a white what? It's a white caravan, a white guy caravan. A white guy caravan. Right now, uh, off the shot where? She said, exit 270, mom, exit 275 on 40. Right past the way station. Right past the way station. Okay. Please hurry, he's standing right in front of me. Just ask 401, they will be... This is 50 seconds in, and the other dispatcher's just now starting to make the call. And she's going to turn and ask the other dispatcher that you took an eye to call a question. And you may not be able to hear it, but the dispatcher who took the phone call from the guy is going to give her the wrong location. The dispatcher who took the call, the 911 call, is going to say it's 275 and 40 westbound. It's not a question she ever asked the caller, and it's not something he ever said. It's something that she has invented from sitting here to turning and going over there. And it's actually the wrong side of the interstate. So all the officers who are planning their response to get there, a, a route in their mind, are planning a route to show up on the wrong side of the interstate. And this is not the worst of the errors that's about to happen. Uh, officer shot, 275 trying to get further. Officer shot, 275 oh my God! The reality of what the guy is seeing is starting to hit him, and I've seen this, the scene. It's, it's absolutely horrible. Oh my God! Oh my God! Hello? We're 81 seconds into it, and they have not finished the dispatch yet. To the wrong location. Are you there? Yes. Okay. What, what do you see, sir? His brain. She's dead. His brain is on. That's an officer. Remember, just call the police and they'll show up. Sometime. Yes, yes. This is Tyrone, and it's a West Memphis police officer. Two white men, one fat. He just said two white men, one fat, both Memphis, uh, West Memphis police officers. Driving from the hospital right now is the chief of police, and in the car is his wife, who's recovering from open heart surgery. 
and he's just heard his son described to him and at the wrong location. Whose house are dead? I was in the ditch. That broke dead, ma'am. Hey, you probably couldn't hear that, but the dispatcher in the background has just gotten the address wrong again, and she's now two miles off. She's dispatching people with a correction to 277 and 40 westbound, two miles from where they are. It's right past the way station. Right past the way station. Head east. It's head east. Biggest head east? Yes. Yeah. Right past the way station. Exit 375. Alright. Who's head east? The suspect or the victim? She's still not aware that the victims are police officers and they've been shot. And that they're heading eastbound. She's like, who's driving away? Well, it's obviously not the people who have been shot and killed. Now, what's even worse about this is that it's, it was a stop that the officers had called in where they were, and the dispatcher is unaware. Somehow or another, she managed to forget that they were on a traffic stop there. She's not putting any of this information together. And every time she talks to this guy, it's a brand new conversation. And you get another error uh, between him telling her and then her telling the other dispatcher. So he called in 275 and 40. She couldn't remember it for you know 20 seconds or whatever it was before she got that right. And then when she finally tells the other dispatcher that possibly a police officer has been shot, she sends them to 275 and 40 westbound when they're in the east lane. And then <clears throat> someone on the radio asks for a clarification. And the dispatcher then tells them 277 and 40, which is two miles away. Meanwhile, they're both lying on the side of the road, one of them in a ditch. The one who's already dead, the son of the chief of police, had experienced something that's known as a cadaveric spasm or cadaveric spasm. When someone dies, very often, this happens in suicides with guns a lot, as soon as they die, because uh, the death is so instantaneous, their hand locks around the firearm that they were carrying, which is the chief of police's son had, had one of those. And in a moment, the chief of police, well, in a few moments, the chief of police is going to drive up. And the first thing he's going to see is his dead son, who is missing part of his head and has been shot through the throat, with his wife in the car, who's trying to recover from open heart surgery. And two minutes, 16 seconds into this call, no one knows where they are yet, because the dispatchers can't dispatch. Obviously, needless to say, the police department's policies changed immediately. Not only in how they handle traffic stops, all traffic stops now require two officers, one of whom must be armed with a shotgun and be uh, in a cover position, just in case. And though I don't know this, I hope that these dispatchers were fired. Now, I don't know if medical help had gotten there earlier, whether or not the one officer who was still alive and lived for quite a while would have been able to be saved. But one thing I know for certain is with people like this dispatching the call, he stood no chance. And rem remember, dispatchers and police departments, and they don't care about anyone as much as they care about the officers on patrol. And she can't get the call right for the people they're most concerned about being good for. And these clowns show up on my channel and just say, it's okay, you don't need a firearm. The police will take care of it. Well, that's great. It's absolutely wonderful. Well, I don't live uh, eight seconds away from a police department. Uh, I'm, I might split this video up into a, a series. I'm going to review a shooting of a police officer, several of them. And one of them 
if I recall correctly, the time that he's first attacked until he's finally killed is 14 seconds, during which time he's been moved 10 feet, put on the ground, stabbed about a dozen times, kicked three times, rolled over, then had his service pistol re removed, and he shot through the back of his throat, which killed him. He was going to die anyway, but they wanted to make sure. And then they drag his body, throw it in a ditch off on the side of the road. Also, in the dash cam video, you can see the police officer who drove by, who eventually turns around and finds a constable dead. What clued him in that there was something in trouble was the car that he had seen a few moments ago started speeding away, <clears throat> and that concerned him, so he turned around to see what was the matter. Don't ever fucking come to my channel and tell me you can just call for help and someone will do it. There is an obligation to have a certain degree of responsibility for your life instead of constantly relying on, I guess, the universe to be friendly to you and show up and help you. Thank you. No, I like to be slightly self-sufficient, particularly because when you call 911, you don't know who's going to answer the phone and how competent they are. But if you need to call, the one thing you know for sure is that you need help now.